Okay, now we can finally derive the IS relationship. Okay, so let me draw another diagram right here. I'm going to put Y here and I'm going to put I here, interest rate. Okay, now here's the tricky part. I'm going to drag this down. Okay, so this is Y prime. I'm going to drag this down. This is Y naught. And I'm going to drag this down. This is Y prime prime. Okay, now when we had an output of Y prime, what was our interest rate? Our interest rate at this point was I prime. Uh, and remember what we know is that I prime is larger than I, which is larger than I prime prime. Okay. So suppose this point, this is where we have I prime. Okay, now let's come to the next point. We have Y naught. When we had an output of Y naught, what rate of interest did we have? We had I, and I is less than I prime. So suppose this point right here is I. And similarly, let's come to the third output, Y prime prime. When we had Y prime prime, uh, what rate of interest did we have? We had I prime prime, which is less than I. So suppose this point, I prime prime, and this point. Now, if we join this points, this is what we get. And this is basically the ice curve. So effectively, what we see is that, uh, let me just write this down, I suppose. When interest rate rises, output falls, vice versa. And this is basically the ice relationship. So just like this. That is it. So remember that whenever we have a downward sloping curve like this, there are two things effectively that can happen to this curve. One is movement along the curve. So in this case, we see that through uh, interest rate. So when the interest rate is changing, we stay on the same curve but we move up or down on it. So from this point, we move down the same curve if interest rate is falling, and we move up if interest rate is increasing. But another thing that can happen is if, uh, is the, the entire curve shifting left and right. And the question is, when might that happen? Uh, once again, I would recommend that you guys pause the video, think about it for a while, and try to figure out that under what condition might the ice curve shift. So now the question is, um, what, what, what does it mean for the ice curve to shift? That means, well, let me just draw this again. 
So we have y here, we have i here, we have is here. And if the ice curve is to shift, suppose it shifts outside and we have is prime, what does this shift really mean? It means that at the same level of interest, at I naught, interest rate has not changed. At the same level of interest, something has happened for which the economy is now producing more. How might this happen? Why might this happen? And the answer is very simple. Uh, let me write down the equation once again. Y is given by C Y minus T plus I, which is now a function of Y and small i plus G. Okay, now what we are seeing is that for the same level of I, this has not changed. For the same level of I, Y has gone up. Why might that be? How might that be? And the answer is simple. That's because something from the autonomous part of demand has changed. And autonomous part is either G or T. So either government expenditure has changed or the government's tax revenue has changed, which has caused ice curve to shift. Now, let's try to figure out which one and in which direction. Ice has shifted to the right. Output has increased. So if we are talking about government expenditure, then it must have increased because if y is to increase government expenditure has to increase if g falls y will fall what about t t must have decreased because if once again if y is to increase tax has to go down because at the end of the day, if tax is going up, if you have to spend more in tax, you're going to be consuming less, you're going to be investing less. As a result, your demand will fall. As a result, your output will fall. So this is overall, let me sum up what we have found so far is that when interest rate change that leads to a change in demand this relationship is inverse so when interest rate go up demand falls and when interest rates go down demand increases we showed this relationship in this diagram from this diagram which was z against y we extrapolated and drew a diagram of I against Y, and we found a downward sloping curve, which is the IS curve. That basically tells us that interest rate has an inverse relationship with output in the economy. So whenever interest rate is high, we expect output to fall. Well, the first thing that will happen is when interest rate is high, demand will fall. As a result, output will fall and vice versa. When interest rate is low, demand will go up. As a result, output will go up. After this, we, 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 we saw under what circumstances the ice curve will shift. In this instance, we only saw movement along the ice curve, which only happens when interest rate is changing but there is still government and whenever government's actions change it obviously has an effect on the economy 
and that is this. When government decide to spend more, notice that government expenditure is part of the demand and part of the output. So when government spends more, it increases our output at the same level of interest. And if government is spending less, it's going to reduce our output. And tax has an inverse relationship with, uh, with output. So if tax is going up, output is falling. If tax is going down, output is increasing. Okay, so that's it for the ice curve.